Question 16 says, an irrigation system uses a pump to move water from lower level to higher level. The electricity for the pump is generated using panel of solar cells. The panel of solar cells is 1.2 meter long and 0.8 meter wide. To pump water from the lower level to the higher level, the pump needs a minimum power of 141. Guys, the moment you see the pump needs a minimum power, so what type of power does the pump require? Electrical power, of course. So this 140 watt is actually electrical power. But where does this power come from? This power comes from the sun. And the moment you see intensity, the equation that should pop up in your head is intensity equals power by area. And in that equation, intensity equals power over area. Uh, this power is always in the form of light, remember this. So the moment you come across these uh, quantities, that is intensity and uh, the dimensions of the solar cell. So using these dimensions, you can easily find out the area and using the equation um, power equals, sorry, intensity equals power by area, you can find out the power. But this power will be in the form of um, light. But the power given over here is the electrical power. So. When you talk about the efficiency of the solar panels, it takes in as in the input is uh, light and the output is electrical. So when you calculate efficiency, it's always the energy output divided by energy input or efficiency can also be calculated using power. It's not always just the energy that you'll have to use to calculate efficiency. You can also calculate efficiency using power as well. So the very first step is to uh, find out the power of the sun at the solar cell. Intensity equals to power by area. So power equals to intensity into area. But guys, one more time, the power that you have calculated over here is actually in the form of light. And the output power is already given in the question. So efficiency is output by input. And one more time, output by input doesn't always necessarily have to be in the form of energy. Output and input can also be in the form of power. So this is my efficiency. Next question says, suggest two ways, two reasons why the value calculated in one is the minimum efficiency that will operate the pump. Why is this the minimum efficiency? <clears throat> um, when it comes to solar cells, the light radiation that falls on it must be incident perpendicularly. If, <clears throat> the light radiation is not perpendicular, you'll never get the maximum power output. So this could be one of the reasons. Intensity may be uh, lower due to clouds. Okay, this could be another reason. And the other one would be light from the sun may not be incident on the solar cell at 90 degree or perpendicularly. Part B says, light from the sun arriving at the solar cell is unpolarized. And part B1 says, explain the difference between unpolarized and plain polarized. Light. This is one of the most common questions, but unfortunately, despite being one of the most common questions, a lot of times students mix up two terms. There is the mix up um, direction and plane. Just remember, for this answer, you either construct your answer completely based on plane or you uh, construct your answer completely based on direction. Uh, for this paper, I have constructed the answer based on plane. So in unpolarized light, oscillations are in multiple planes. And in plane polarized light, oscillations are only in one plane. And this gets you two marks. The third mark is for linking uh, the direction of motion with the uh, plane. So the plane includes direction of motion or direction of wave travel. But guys, if you were writing the same answer in terms of direction, the answer would have been, I'm saying this, unpolarized light has oscillations in multiple directions. Plane polarized light has oscillations in only one direction. And this direction is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. So you clearly see when it comes to plane, the language is plane includes, and when it comes to direction, you say direction is perpendicular. For this paper, you can clearly see it's laid out perfectly clearly in the mark scheme. The first section is for plane, the second section is for direction. My request to everyone would be, 
do not mix the two concepts up. Keep them separate. Either you construct in terms of plane or you construct in terms of direction. Next part says, describe how a student can demonstrate that light from the sun is unpolarized. Okay, for this I have a small demonstration for you all. So here you have unpolarized light at the left, of course. And when unpolarized light passes through a polarizing filter, you can see it gets polarized. Now, if you start rotating the filter, you'll see since there are multiple directions of oscillation or multiple planes of oscillation, even if you rotate this, at least one plane will always pass through the filter, right? So there will always be one plane of oscillation that gets to pass through the filter. So even if you rotate this, since one plane always passes, rotation does not cause any change in intensity. So that is the key concept behind uh, how to check whether light is unpolarized. Pass the light through a polarizing filter, rotate the filter, and if the light is unpolarized, there will be no change in intensity. Why? You don't have to write this part, I'm just saying this anyway, because at least one plane of oscillation of light gets to pass always through the polarizing filter it, in whichever orientation it is placed. So my answer is light directed through a polarizing filter. This gets you point one. And the second point is there is no change in intensity. And guess what, guys? Had light been polarized, the rotation of the filter would have caused a change in the intensity of light. And the moment you see that the intensity changes, rest assured, this is polarized light, not unpolarized. So when it comes to, one more time, um, unpolarized light, when unpolarized light is passed through a polarizing filter and rotated, there is no change in intensity.